Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Kimber Bell. My name is Laurie and today I'm going to talk all about over the edge. We're talking over the edge tea towels which we have right here and aprons and we're going to talk about the pocket specifically as well as the in the tea towel where the over the edge part happens. Um, today, I also wanted to introduce someone to you. Maddie, come on over. So I have a special guest who's always with us. You just don't even know it. Hi, everyone. And it's Maddie. And Maddie is wonderful. She's the one that helps us uh, answer all these questions. Yeah. Do you yeah. Wanna... So I just wanted to tell everyone to ask your questions. Make sure you put them in the comments so that we can get them answered by Laurie. Yes, yep. and you have an announcement? Yep, we oh, have good. a special announcement. So next Tuesday on Tuesday Tips, we are going to be doing a really fun giveaway. So make sure yep. you join us next week. Love giveaways. So How about fun. you guys? And it's a good one. It is a really oh, good one. You won't want to miss want. it. It's one I want. Yes. Thank you so yep. much, Maddie. Thanks. So if you have any questions, type them in during. If you have any questions right now about Over the Edge or something that you've had a frustration with or need some help with, type those in and Maddie's going to get started answering those right away. So to begin with, I want to show you two things really quick. First of all, um, the new Kimberbell uh, lineup, if you will, of our stabilizers is so fabulous. I love this product, love, love this product. So, um, we will talk a little bit about our wash away stabilizer. Now here's the cool part. Once you take your tag off or you unwrap the stabilizer, the very next thing is you're going, oh, I'm looking at the stabilizer going, which one is this? Which one is this? No worries here. Folks, there are these cool slap bracelets and I love this. You just put it right on your stabilizer. You'll never mix them up. You know exactly what stabilizer you need and you can go right to it and get it. The other cool thing is while I'm working with this, put it on my wrist, I can take it, I can measure it out. When I'm finished, it'll stay nice and rolled up. I simply pull this off my wrist and put it right back on my stabilizer. This is fabulous. And if you're looking for the slap bracelets, this is what you'd look for. They're in a really cute little um, package here. And as you can see, it's got all the different colors that coordinate color coordinate with the stabilizer. That was just something I just love. All right, so to get started with, we're gonna actually come down here on our workbench and I'm gonna show you up close kind of some really good tips. Now hopefully you're gonna get a lot of tips and if you have some other tips that you have questions about, you wanna know about, please send us a, a little comment and we would be happy to do that. All right, so to start with down here, I have got my five by seven hoop. And I'm going to be making an over the edge tea towel with the watermelon. So what I start out with is that exact same stabilizer I just showed you. It's the sticky back wash away. Sticky back wash away is perfect for this project. And I'll show you why. The next thing you had, I've done here is I've stitched out the placement line. I stitch it in a dark color. Please don't stitch it in white. It's really hard to see in white. And then the next thing I do is I take my tea towel and I fold it over in half lengthwise. So you can see this whole thing lengthwise. I know this is my top, so this is my bottom. And you're actually going to attach the bottom onto your, um, your hoop right here. Okay. Now I've done it right sides together. And what I like to do is I like to go just a hair past this line and I make it even all the way across by lining up my uh, on my hoop. So I've lined up my tick mark with my uh, side mark, if you will, on my hoop and I just nicely press that down and then when I open it up I press it down on the other side. Now the reason I like to go just a hair past that line is because it actually night tacks it down really well it's not on the edge but it actually catches that entire edge which is super important for this staying in place now the next thing i wanted to show you and i've got another hoop where i've got it stitched already is this very thing and this is where um, i've already stitched out the box so the basting box is stitched down and I've got the watermelon outline stitched down. Now you can see it hangs off the edge, thus over the edge. That's the important part. 
Now what I like to do at this point, um, I kind of like to get rid of this thicker bulky edge so when it's stitching satin stitches or decorative stitches, it's not going through quite so many layers. Um, now you might wonder, oh does this affect the integrity? And I'll show you one here at the end that I have done and I, it doesn't uh, affect the integrity at all. So I simply take a seam ripper and as, as you can see I can easily just pull those stitches and those stitches came right out. Can you see how easy that is? From there to there. So now I can get underneath and then I use my Camberbell scissors. I particularly like the duck bills for this because this is several layers and so it's easy to go through and I just simply make a couple of snips here and I see that and I just only cut out that ribbed piece and that ribbed piece comes right out now when I go to stitch this I'm not going to have that extra bulk okay now the next one I wanted to show you is one that I have already I'm going to flip this around sorry the next one I've sh I'm going to show you I have now placed this um, foam stabilizer now I let it's called flexible foam stabilizer. It's wonderful, and if you get this Kimberbell product, it's wonderful. It's called Flexi Foam, and it is perfect for embroidering. I love this. This is an amazing product, and you can find it at your local quilt shop. Now the other cool thing about this flexible foam is it's easy to trim. It doesn't have the iron on on one side, so it's easy to trim. I think, and. An important thing is before you stitch this on, please raise your presser foot because you're already getting some, you know, bulk here. So when I go to trim, I just simply trim it and I like using the duckbill scissors again. And this is something um, that is really uh, important and to, to note. Okay, so right now it's kind of stuck down to my stabilizer. I'm going to pull it because that stabilizer is sticky, right? Sticky back stabilizer. Let's say I'm cutting along and I happen to accidentally nick this stabilizer, okay, as I'm trimming. Whether it be with the fabric or the foam, I'm going to just purposely nick it right here. Oh, look, I have a big hole. Um, so now, what to do? Because if I keep stitching, this is going to pull, right? You can see that hole right there easy easy fix I just simply take a piece of my stabilizer cut it off and you're just gonna make what I call a band-aid so you simply take the paper off of this little piece okay and it's sticky on the one side so I'm gonna stick it to the back side of my hoop so I'm gonna turn my hoop over I simply band-aid or cover over that cut that's in my stabilizer and you just would lay this down a flat surface and to press to finish pressing that so I'm going to move these others out of the way so you can actually see me press that down you just kind of go like that and now it's stuck really well and you fixed that little boo-boo if you made what cut your stabilizer that works anytime you cut your stabilizer so if you're scoring it and you scored it too hard I've seen so many people throw the entire piece away don't do that just cut off a piece and band-aid it a little bit and it's going to work perfectly fine no worries all right i told you i would show you one that i had done isn't that cute i love these yellow uh, lemon colored yellow tea towels that we have now this one you can see i've already finished it off i still have the water soluble stabilizer on the back but as you can see i kept all the same bobbin threads they match because it's the same on the front and the back. It's called over the edge for a reason because it hangs over the edge, but you want it to match. So make sure you use matching bobbin thread when you're stitching and tacking these down. Okay, now this is when I cut out that rib. And as you can see, no matter how hard I pull on this, there is absolutely zero give because of all of the stitching, the fabric, it just holds it all right in place. Now at this point, I just wanted to show you um, all these cool colors that we have at Kimberbell. There's not only the blue with the or the navy 
with the navy polka dot, but we've got our aqua with polka dot and stripes, red, there's the yellow, and then we also have the one that I'm wearing, which is this um, warm gray color. So you've got every color right there. Can you see that? That is picture of the one that I'm wearing. Now I want you to note down at the bottom you saw a pocket. That pocket is the next thing we're gonna talk about. A lot of times people are like, how do I place my pocket properly and make it look good? So I'm gonna show you how you do that. So to start with, you will have, um, and I've sewn one on already, but I wanted you to see how I go about doing this, okay? So the first thing I do is I take my tea towel and I fold it in half and in half again. So I have quarters, okay? I iron that seam. I'm gonna twist it that way so you can see it a little bit better. I iron that seam, okay? And make a crease, not a seam, but more of a crease, that folded edge, okay? And then when I open it up, you can see right in the middle, this blue line. All I did was take a piece of, or take a chalk. I have a chalk at home. You can use any kind of water-soluble uh, marking if you want as well. But I've marked the very middle, okay? The next thing I did is I marked whether my tea towel, this was the right side of my tea towel and this is the left side of my tea towel, all right? The reason I did that is so, um, if you're trying to put your pocket on your left side and it's facing you, you're like, wait a minute, is, is this my right? And I would have automatically put it on the wrong side. And I've done that before. So I mark them right, left. I am left-handed, so I put my pocket on the left side. But I'm gonna show you how you would put it on the right side if you'd like. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you've got your right side of your fabric right here, okay? So I'm gonna slide down and this is still my right side. My right side of the fabric, I'm going to mark. Now I like to mark it using a um, iron on friction pin. Now the reason you do that, if you notice this is a vinyl, you and everything that goes underneath that vinyl stays underneath that vinyl. So if you wanna use a water soluble, you can, but you're gonna to have to get it wet from the back or um, get rid of the markings before you place the vinyl, but then it's wet and you have to wait. So in order to just speed up the process of me being able to get this stitched out, I like the iron, iron on friction pan and I'll show you when you would take that off, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is measure four inches from this middle center line. And if you have a four inch ruler, that's perfect. If you don't, I simply, Go ahead and I'm just gonna mark it right here at four inches and I'm gonna draw my line. And you're gonna want a nice long line and the reason for that is you're hooping this, okay? And you want it to be centered, all right? The next thing is, is I want it to be at seven and a half inches and I'm gonna see if I can do this upside down, all right? So from this line going down, there's my seven and a half inches right there, okay? And then I'm going to, you can mark that on both sides, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw this. And that now is where I'm placing my pocket. That's the center. Now when you place that on the hoop, I've got it marked on the top, but if I were to fold this up, I'd be going, now where's my fold? I can't find it. So here's another little tip or trick that I like to do. I like to place a little pin right along that line. Can you see that's right on the line? Not in the center, because you're gonna be folding it there. And then I like to place another one coming on the other side, okay? Now place them right on the line, okay? So that they're on the line and on the line. Can you see that? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it up first, and then see how you can see that pin? So you know right where that fold is supposed to happen, okay? And then I can see this other pin, and I know I'm gonna fold it on the other pin, okay? Right there. And if you want, if you have, some of your pin should show on the back side if you push your pin through, okay? So now I've got it set 
That's exactly how I want to do it. I take my iron and I iron that down, okay, from the back side. And then I'm going to take my hoop. Now, once again, we did say stair tear away. You can certainly use tear away. That's a, a very efficient way. Or if you have a hoop that's different sizes, sometimes this isn't going to catch in the hoop, your tea towel. So that makes it harder to hoop. Even though I'm doing this six by 10 design, this all I have is an eight by 12 inch hoop, for example. So if this is the only hoop I have, then I need to make sure that it's hooped in. And the only way I can be sure of that is if I use sticky back. So I'm using sticky back wash away and I can wash it out later. Or you can use sticky back tear away, which is what I used on this side and I just tore it off. But I'm gonna smooth that out and I'm gonna place it across. And it's you can see the yellow lines underneath are helping me line this up as well. And then I simply pull this down and it is all lined up easy 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 that's what I love about the sticky back um, tear away and wash away products look how easy that was then I simply take my pins out make sure you remove those folks you don't want those under your needle and then at this point is when I would iron this this um, iron is not on obviously so um, I would be burning my mat if it were um, but you would just iron that line away and then it's gone and you're ready to stitch and it's already centered for you. Now the other cool thing I wanted to share with you is look at this. This is uh, one of our colored uh, vinyls. So we have three different sets of colored vinyls. There is Sweet as Candy Clear Vinyl, Sweet as Candy Colored Vinyl in the pink. So it's like peach, and there's taffy, there's um, gumdrop. These are fun names, right? Grapefruit. And as you can see, it comes with a pack of different colored um, pieces of the vinyl. Okay, and so I took one of these vinyl pieces from this pack. I don't remember exactly which one. I just played with it till I got the one I liked. And I added a lime. So I've got strawberry limeade, which is one of my favorite drinks. And there's also this one that's got Fresh mint, spearmint, gummy bear, Hawaiian ice. So these are different colors of blues and greens, okay? And they look dark to start with, but if you actually just look at them individually, they're not quite as dark. So as you can see, that's the first one. See how it's just slightly off of clear? And then this one is a little bit, I'm gonna tuck that under, a little bit darker and so forth. You could even use those and you could make a straight lime juice if you want or limeade or whatever. So I just love having fun, being creative. That's one of the best things I think uh, I enjoy about Kimberbell is being creative. Creative is the key or the ticket, if you will. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you is this is one of our other tea towels. And as you can see, we've used this crochet edge trim. And this crochet edge trim is perfect because it's got this nice little finished edge and it works perfect as the ties and then there's a cute little ribbon right here on this one this is our spring and I was showing you this summer if you were wondering so the summer CD has um, the watermelons and it's a summer spring CD and it also has this full bloom so I love that and then the neckline is also done with the same pack of ribbon so I want to show you what the packs of, not ribbon, sorry, the packs of crocheted edge trim. So we've got three, there's the green, there's red, and there's what we call uh, the warm gray, right here, or gray. So I love these three colors. They work perfectly. So those are my tips for today. Um, I'm gonna come back and show you a little bit, a few things more. So this was the apron right here. And so before we go all the way back, you can see right here, this is the pocket that comes on that apron uh, that you can put. And of course, different sizes, five by seven, six by 10. What I do love is you can make all these designs right here in a five by seven hoop as well. You don't have to have any larger hoop than a five by seven to make every single one of these designs. All right. 
And so if anybody has any questions, um, this is summer over the edge, or over the edge spring and summer, and our over the edge winter, fall and winter. This one's so cute, guys. I just love them both. So these are both very creative, fun ways to make your kitchen adorable, great gifts. And I'm wondering, if do we have any questions out there that we can answer? So someone is wondering if you could go through the types of stabilizer that you'd need to make this. Absolutely. Okay, so all I used with all of these projects today was a wash away and the flexi foam for the ones that I made today. Now, I also would highly recommend for the over the edge pocket, if it's a pocket that's not applied straight to this um, design, which happens to be in our fall winter. So if you have this CD, you're also going to want just a plain water soluble uh, stabilizer. And that's just when you make the pocket itself. Um, when you're actually placing it, like I showed you in the hoop, that's when I would recommend the wash away sticky back. So the sticky back wash away is the one I would recommend um, for any kind of placement if you're placing it on the hoop. But for this particular CD, you might also want to pick up some regular wash away stabilizer. And of course, for all these projects, you're gonna want this flex flexi foam. And this is great for the baskets, for a lot of our other products as well. Do we have any other questions? Um, one last question, oh wait. Would one a package of crochet edge trim be enough to make an apron? Correct, yes it is, it is. And I'll tell you why. In the crochet edge trim packages, let me pull one up here for you. Um, there's three different trim sizes and there's two yards, two yards, and two yards. So there's two yards of the quarter inch, two yards of this uh, one inch, and two yards of the one and a half. So basically, the larger one, you're gonna use one yard on each strap, which should be plenty to tie. And then this middle one is your neck strap, and then you can decorate or use this as your embellishment, the smaller one. Or if you prefer, and you want a smaller tie string, totally, you've got plenty of, of um, the, the crocheted edge trim right here on the small one because it's all two yards. So you could use the smaller one if you prefer a smaller tie. Not a problem. Do we have any other questions? And then lastly, wondering if on the pocket on your apron, if one piece of vinyl would be enough to yeah, hold it. Great question. You're right. Yes. One piece of vinyl. I used one piece on my on the apron that I made the yellow one. However, we do ask for two if you're doing a heavy duty. So if you're using the vinyl and you're wanting to put, put utensils and you're gonna be putting your hand in the pocket or um, spatulas and carrying those around, I would recommend two layers. But if you're just using it for, for really cute looks or just one time use maybe for your utensils, one should be plenty. So it depends on how, how durable and how much abuse maybe <laughs> that you put your pockets through. So, and this is really good uh, vinyl. It's gauge, 12 gauge. So it's a really good thick vinyl. All of these are 12 gauge uh, vinyl pieces. So that's an excellent question. And if you're trying to mix and match and you don't have the exact color of vinyl that you want, you guys ever, um, like painted, anybody painted where you can use two colors together to make the color that you want. So you can mix and match any of these. Um, let's say you, it's perfect, but you want it to be more durable and you're using one of these color, add a clear behind it. If you like it a little bit darker, then you would add two of these um, colored ones together. So you can mix it up and match these however you want. However, you can put one piece if you'd like. You can put two if you really want it extra durable because you're going to be putting a lot of things in your pockets. Anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Remember, next week is a giveaway, so you want to stay tuned um, next Tuesday, and we'll tell you how you win and what you'll win. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye-bye.